get my intro mode. <sighs> Loosen up here. Crack your neck. That's right. Hi everybody, this is Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Got Lamont here as a sidekick, and we're on episode number five of Real Fish Talk, so stay tuned. This one comes from Pastor Velcro from YouTube, and it goes like this. Can you please talk about a personal pet peeve of mine? Perhaps I get carried away, but when a schooling fish, but when a fish is a schooling fish, what does that mean? Some say it means they need four or five companions. Some need a whole lot more. Some might school with related species, some will not. What I truly hate though is a fish tank with two quarry cats, two neons, two barbs, two damios, one angel, one dwarf ram, and an apisto. <laughs> you get the idea. <laughs> can you talk about the effects this might have on the fish? We certainly can. What do you got, Lamont? Well, in my experience, when you have everything pared down, I mean, first off, it's like the ones that are supposed to be in, say, a minimum group of five or six, and you pair them down to two, things like tetras, they get awfully rambunctious, they can get a little bit aggressive, and so, so you have that problem multiplied by, what, five or six times, and so, essentially, it's just, it compounds the problem. <laughs> sure, that, that's, that's a good starting point, but there's, you know, there's other uh, so issues there as well. Different species, you know, like in the store, we'll recommend the bare minimum of three Corydoras, even though we know in the wild they're traveling in giant packs, and it's because typically we can get the average public to agree to three. If we come out the gate saying, well, you know, really, should be a minimum of ten, they just look at us like we're crazy because Corydoras aren't the cheapest fish in the world. And if they want stir by Corydoras, they might be five to seven dollars depending on your local store, and pretty soon they're investing seventy dollars in cleaner fish. And that's what they came in looking for. Uh, so, you know, three being the bare minimum where they won't absolutely die, but we always try and tell them the more the merrier. Um, you know, with uh, things like tetras, we would say the general rule of thumb is minimum five or six, and then we always stress, and that would be the minimum, and to help kind of guide people towards the right numbers, uh, we do 10% off any fish when you buy 10 or more. If they buy 20 or more of the same fish, they get 20% off, that type of thing, and at 50, we'll give 25% off, and that's because we're already cutting prices so low that there's not a lot of money to be left after we've quarantined them and got them healthy at that point, but we do want to reward people for doing the right thing and getting big schools. Um, you know, we, I would say, you know, some of the fear, um, like in the store, we never want to see someone take home two of any fish, and you want to explain why that is, Lamont? Well, so like I was saying, you know, some they have to have minimum size groups to be in, at least for an aquarium, but then you also have the flip side where, let's see, there's a lot of aggression, especially with things like cichlids, or you know, in this case, <clears throat> apistos versus rams, same kind of thing. Um, you know, it's, it's, I don't know, personally I kind of call it the, the prison cell aesthetic, where it's, or the kind of the Noah's Ark aesthetic, where it's just different. People like to have things in pairs, but in reality it's like the worst possible thing you can do for a fish tank. And so let's say, you know, you want to keep two angels, what's going to happen? Why do we, you know, say, well, maybe I would avoid the number two? Right, well, it's because you're going to have one that dominates over the other one as far as food, territory, um, hiding spots, or something like that. So. And on top of that, if you get, let's say, two males, they can squabble back and forth. If we get a male and a female, like with angels, uh, that female is just going to get harassed all the time to breed. Same with apistos and rams and lots of the cichlids. And even with uh, like guppies, which aren't a schooling fish, um, but even there, one male, one female, female's going to get tired, going to get you know immune system compromised, could get sick, that type of thing. Um, and when we go to three, 
even if we can't sex a fish and it's all three males or two males and a girl it breaks up that dynamic and so you know even if you weren't going to get schools of tetras you'd still far be better off getting three than two uh, and sometimes you might even be better off getting one than two two can just be bad a lot of the time um, some of the behaviors you might see when you don't have a big enough group and a big enough group is subjective here so while it might be 2,000 in the wild or 20,000 in the wild or five in your aquarium um, it's the behavior of the fish to know whether you have a good group going and so let's say we have one zebra danio and he sits uh, down at the gravel level in the corner that's not a normal behavior and that would tell us that he's not happy uh, if we had three of them and they're eating well it's the right number you know uh, that they're spawning and stuff like that and they're thriving they're probably doing just fine and uh, only you will know whether your group is correct but um, you know that being said are your odds better at finding that perfect number with 12 or 20 most likely with a schooling fish yes now uh, there are some fish like in the the question there uh, like tiger barbs it's almost a massacre under <laughs> 12 like it they just systematically kill each other off most of the time now I'm sure there's someone's gonna put in the comment that says well I have four tiger barbs and they are adorable and they've gotten along for 10 years that definitely happens but the next 50 customers we sell tiger barbs to if we were to do that we would find that probably 45 out of 50 of them are having problems only owning four tiger barbs and sometimes people don't realize that the tiger barbs won't necessarily be aggressive with each other they could be aggressive with the angel fish or vice versa they're going well they don't touch any of the other fish but i keep losing tiger barbs well that's the aggression you know and um you know spreading that aggression out is for some of the aggressive fish like tiger barbs and cichlids and things like that um, whereas <clears throat> conversely for tetras and peaceful fish they find strength in numbers so their goal is put a bunch of fish together appear to be a big fish so that other big fish from far away see it as one big fish instead of a bunch of tiny fish and uh, that's their defense mechanism and the only other defense mechanism, if you've ever seen it, for like a, a neon tetra, for instance, it just plays dead. So, you know, you, you get it caught in a net, you put it in a fish bag, and you're going to send it home with someone. And a lot of times people go, are they alive? Or they, you know, they look they're upside down. And they totally are. But that's their defense mechanism is once you've broken them away from the school of 100 in the tank, and there's, you know, three in the bag going to visit the three more that are already at home, they just try and play dead because they're hoping the school swim by and they can join. Um, but yeah, I'm going to see if I can dig up any videos of some really big schools so you can see what it would be like in the wild. I'll have to get permission from uh, some of the other YouTube channels. Some of them uh, film in the wild and it's super cool and you can see it. And I would say you're probably best off choosing to make large groups of a few different species of fish than you are to have the Noah's Ark with you have two of everything. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, for a multitude of reasons but um, you know at the end of the day you can do whatever you want you know this YouTube video is not gonna come knock down your door and go hey you need more than two black neon tetras <laughs> um, but you know if you are trying to get different behaviors out of fish um, sometimes adding numbers can help and uh, like I think you just brought some Corydoras home and it changed them yeah totally yeah I mean it was Basically three green lasers that I've been waiting to add to, but temporarily I added two uh, orphaned red lasers. Which is all we had left at the shop, so you know they kind <laughs> of, you know, when uh, the question posed here asked, and sometimes stuff will school together, and I think for you it turned out that, yeah, they're all best friends now, yeah? Right, I think the, the greens versus the reds, they, I guess they all kind of figured close enough. And so, so I noticed the green lasers went from kind of hiding and sneaking around to uh, uh, mid-level mid swimming, you know, they're all kind of moving in a pattern. Yeah, dancing sure. around. Right. So. Yeah, and so, you know, that mixing of species to school together, things like cardinal tetras and neon tetras are very similar, and a lot of times that'll work. 
Sometimes you'll get stress schooling where let's say you had five neon tetras and you only own one um, Rominos tetra and you go, oh, it schools with it just fine. Well, realize it's doing that because it can't school with anything else. And a lot of times you'll get that behavior with loaches um, where loaches are like you have one clown loach and he goes, oh, he loves swimming with the angelfish. He does it all the time. He would much prefer to swim with other loaches, trust me. Um, he's doing it out of, well, if I hang out with the other big fish, they can protect me, I can eat, that type of thing, instead of moving around in a pack like they'd like to. Um, and that's, you know, there, there is a difference between schooling fish and shoaling fish. And, you know, a school really needs a tight pack, um, and they really don't operate well without it. And a shoaling fish, they prefer to have groups of fish. They can survive outside of that. Um, but they prefer, you know, schooling. And they, so when you when you see a shoal, when there's a predator, they'll kind of school up. Otherwise, they'll take a much larger um, space between them as they're moving through an aquarium or in nature. And it's when threats come that they school up. Whereas, like a neon tetra, even in nature in the wild, typically they're in a much tighter group and they're moving as one all the time. And so they don't venture out on their own. Um, but yeah, we would say do some research before you're buying. That's a good thing to know the animal you're going to buy anyway before you listen to a pet store because um, depending on the pet store, depending on the day, depending on the employee even, how bad they need to make a sale, whether they even know about that fish, um, whether you've got the saltwater guy and you're drilling them on Corydora questions or whatever it is, if you have knowledge before you go in, you can uh, kind of, one, see what they're recommending and two, you can see how much they know about the fish. If you know, if it's the store owner and they, you know, they're saying, "Well, sure, you, you only need one of these," you know, and they don't take the time, you know, analyzing. Is he actually keeping them that way? Because then they might be stressed out before you're even buying them. That's a bad time too. If if there's one clown loach in the tank and he, they only ever order in one clown loach, the stress factor is going to be high, high likelihood to get sick. You definitely want a quarantine tank that type of thing, but I hope, uh, Pastor Velcro, we've answered your question, or your pet peeve at least, and <laughs> helped get more information out there. Um, but I would say, when in doubt, more is almost always better. There's lots of fish that um, are expensive, but do better in groups, like rams. They spawn way better if you put a group of 12 in a 40 gallon, or 18 in a 20 gallon, they'll spawn left and right. Um, things like that, which aren't typically considered a schooling fish, but I have seen um, German blue rams, they will harem breed, where two females and a male are all spawning, fertilizing both, both nesting in the same pot, stuff like that. And so that's behaviors you'll see in the wild, not typically in an aquarium, because most people are trying to buy a pair or just two or three, something, just the bare minimum. Um, but yeah, that's, that's all I've got on schooling. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's one of those things that's, for, you know, for people that kind of have a, a different mentality as far as like, well, you know, I, just, I only need two or good enough or whatever. I think once you, if you can show them how they act when there's just a two versus when they are supposed to be in a correct ratio, it's like, I think people would choose to have well, if you've stuck with us this long, you must like what we're doing. Give us a like. Uh, give us some more questions down below. As you've seen in this video, we're answering other people's questions. That could be you. You could be famous for the people that are watching, which isn't that many. No one likes us. But if you do like us, go ahead and subscribe. Follow our content. Check out the other videos we're doing. Uh, let's see, on Thursdays, we're putting out fish room videos. Fridays, it's usually just a general video. It could be, I'm going to show you how to build something could be that I'm going to show you how to breed something. Some other video that doesn't fit in my other categories. Sundays, obviously. New Real Fish Talk episode with me and Lamont. And then Tuesdays, we've got a quick tip. Usually it's a minute and a half or under. And it will blow your mind each and every Tuesday. More exciting than a school lunch menu. Nice. <laughs>